you have successfully managed to claw your way into the Casa Berenice Recordings Podcast, Episode 14. This podcast is our way to release multi-tracked recordings from house concerts that we host in our living room. We being Clay Chaplin and Heather Lockie, and including our Claude friends, Xenotron, Fuzzy, Nemesis, and Fluff Nugget. This episode features a performance by sound artist Casey Anderson. It was recorded live at a Casa Berenice house concert on December 14, 2019. Stick around after the performance for an interview with Casey Anderson. And now, here's Casey Anderson performing on laptop and electronics.
Hello, I'm Casey Anderson. I'm a sound artist and composer and creative technologist, and I also play saxophone. So I have this instrument interface that's on this XYZ controller that I've been using lately. It's a multi-touch interface. Depending on where I put a finger down, I start a different sound. Um, and then I can kind of modulate that sound in a variety of different ways. So I have this kind of touch controller thing um, that is polyphonic. And then I have um, basically a little drone organ thing. It just plays sine tones. It's really, really simple. And I almost exclusively use it to do like a low static tone or a very low cluster or oftentimes in the opposite end of the extreme, just real high. And then the other thing I have is basically like a looping interface. So those are, those are kind of all the pieces. Uh, two of the instruments on the light pad, uh, all they do is just allow a radio to be audible. So that's the last part of the equation. There's a structure to how the different parts of what I was using can be used, how they can or, or can't interact with each other. Outside of that, I have been thinking about transitions from different places. Um, and one thing about what I was using tonight is that I can do a lot of different things. Um, you know, I can start in one range and kind of slowly move in another range pretty easily. Um, and then the other thing is I can also move really, really quickly between uh, a pretty wide set of sounds. Um, I've been trying to think more about either making kind of gradual transitions and building up layers that kind of highlight how those things might be transitioning or doing really fast, detailed, like high change, um, wide variety, kind of punchier things. And what I have right now seems to allow for both, um, more or less. I mean, I like radio because, um, well, first of all, I guess one important um, additional piece of information about the radios that I was using is they have a mechanical dial on them so even when they're off I can change the station and then the other part of it is their AM FM radios so the AM and FM band buttons double is on buttons on these particular radios so uh, one thing that I like about the radio as an instrument is um, let's say I change the tuning knob like I, I move the tuning wheel a little bit in one direction and then I press let's say AM I don't know what is going to happen, but I'm fairly confident I'll either hear noise, talking, or some sort of song. And every once in a while I hear nothing. Um, and so to me that is a structure. Even better, uh, especially with the mechanical tuning wheel, you are often in between uh, positions at the radio where they're actually interfering with each other. So you know you have a sense of like the kind of vocabulary or the like range of possible sounds or categories of sounds that you might get and you know precisely how to make changes but you don't always know what change x is going to result in um, and that's part of what's interesting about the radio as an instrument and so for me um, the light pad or the xyz controller that i was describing is exactly like that like it's it's divided up into six different instruments uh, but I don't have it set up so that it uh, visually tells me exactly where the border is between, say, instrument one and instrument two. It's kind of approximate. So I know that when I put a finger down, I have a high likelihood if I'm in the upper left corner of it being instrument one. But um, sometimes I miss and that actually hits instrument two. And so I can reliably make changes. And I have a general sense of what those changes are going to be like but I still have uh, an opportunity to be surprised. 
what I like about going back and forth between electronics and software is I feel like I have similar uh, design affordances. You know, in both cases, uh, I have the opportunity to kind of pick and choose the aspects of something that I design to use for my own work that are like, you know, say, uh, in accordance with like standards whatever that might be and the other things that are like totally unique to like my own idea like this is you know I always wished uh, instrument acts behaved this way and so I made my own version of it right and I happen to do that in software this time whereas in other times I happen to do that in hardware and so to me uh, I have this first question which sometimes is defined by how easy something seems like it's going to be and other times uh, just happens to have more to do with the tools that I'm, you know, readily using. So even though there are moments where I'm like building circuits and there are other moments where I'm writing computer programs, at least to me, I kind of feel like it's a difference in material, but it's not that different in terms of the thinking or I would like it to be more a difference in material. I guess one thing that's specifically different about the work I do when I am working in, in Haiti and teaching um, what I think of as technology literacy um, and often we're starting at a, at a pretty basic level um, so you know with soldering we're maybe making microphones like controlled synthesizers amplifiers things like that my aspiration is that that project gets to a point where we're teaching them to program and I really believe that teaching technology in a creative context is a particularly rich way to get people who maybe aren't yet sure that they're really interested in something like, say, computer science, electronics, whatever, you know, more formal topics. But if you show people how to make funny sounds and get them interested in trying to turn that into a song, like all of a sudden they have a reason to say maybe spend 45 minutes messing around with these technologies and so as a byproduct of trying to turn the funny sounds into a song uh you know you happen to really learn a particular component of that technology really well so to me um i think there are kind of these different stages and different levels of complexity and ideally i would like to either find moments where it makes more sense to use one over the other you know just going back to the example of say uh circuit bent electronics versus more precisely tuned uh digital systems on like a laptop but um What's kind of exciting to me about what I did tonight is that everything but the electronics is much more integrated these days than it has been previously. And I think you've kind of identified one of the core components of my kind of like larger practice with sound that has yet to be incorporated into this larger thing. And, and there's one more after that. So sure, like it would be cool to find a way to allow an opportunity for hardware to be part of this um, system. I also have yet to find a good way to be playing saxophone while I'm doing electronic music stuff. And so to me, I'm kind of like thinking about um, this kind of push and pull between maybe more than one format or more than one component of my practice with sound on a couple of different levels. Um, and so, yeah, I don't yet have a good answer to that question. And they somehow feel kind of separate to me in the same way that oftentimes I'm either playing saxophone or I'm doing electronic stuff, whether that means like laptops or circuits. And I'm optimistic that those things will come together. You know, this is something that uh, I talked about with Trail a lot was um, like I was really worried about like being spread too, too thin about too many different things, you know, like, oh, shouldn't I like maybe pick some of these things to focus on. And I'd often ask Mark if he thought I was doing too many things, right? <laughs> and what was his answer? I can only imagine. Yeah. Mark was like, well, you know, the you're the person who is the similar thread between all these different things that you do. And like more specifically, he was like, and also I found that as I get older and as I continue to pursue the things I'm interested in, that they somehow kind of, and this wasn't exactly the language he used, but the way I think of it now is they somehow kind of coalesce or they find ways to kind of come together on their own. 
And he always made it sound like you can just trust that that'll happen. Um, and take that pressure off of yourself seeing, uh, thinking like, oh, if it's not happening already or if it doesn't already happen every time, I'm doing something wrong. But more specifically, it's just like, oh, you know, this is just an ongoing process. And you're doing lots of things, and that's what's awesome. Yeah, totally. Well, it's more fun that way. We are all generalists in this room. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I mean, that's one thing that I like about the like greater Los Angeles experimental music world is I feel like we have this community of people who have multiple interests. And they're not only are they really serious about each of those things, but they also embody some combination of those things in different ways. And, you know, I feel like I have versions of this conversation with a lot of the people we know mm -hmm. and that's actually the struggle that people have with trying to balance all the different parts of their practice and to me that that yields interesting outcomes like an interesting work and you know maybe it's never going to be perfect but maybe the fact that it's uneven in different ways every time is what actually makes you know, four Casey Anderson pieces interesting, right? Like, I don't know, at least that's how I think about it. So you can find me at CaseyAnderson.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. Um, it is uh, a little obnoxious. I think it's three <laughs> underscores, CTA, three underscores. Sorry. Thank you for joining us on the Casa Berenice Recordings podcast. We would like to thank the musicians for performing and our lovely community here in Northeast LA for attending our concerts. For more information about our house concerts, or our current release catalog, please visit our website, casabaronisrecordings.com. And thank you for listening.